Hi, I'm Cesar Santos. We're in the middle of Illinois. I'm loving the farming. There's some corn starting to grow there. We just parked here. We found the perfect state park and we're gonna be painting some corn. I really like it here. I just crossed the street and I really love those three corn plants there starting to grow. It's incredible. Right at the edge. They're at risk. So I'm gonna actually paint those three because I'm proud of them. They're the bravest. They're the closest to the dangers of humanity. I love the landscape like that and I was gonna paint it. But the thing is like, what is that made of? It's made of this. So I'm gonna try to paint the closest to me before I paint the bigger mass over there. Blocking myself from the sun, having perfect even shade on my page. I'm putting some Mars Brown by Old Holland. I find that as I paint outside, I'm requiring more quantity of paint and that's good for a painting because I trying to paint so thinly enough to cover and achieve my vision and I didn't think of the paint quality as much before, but now in nature, everything is a little bit more rough and it requires more brush work and more bold decisions. And you don't wanna be kind of glazing stuff around when you're in nature, that's what I feel. Some uh, Terra Vert by Winsor & Newton. I'm gonna put some Naples Yellow by Winsor & Newton. It depends on the system of the artist. Uh, some artists love it just paint with the paint and to see the painting first through the material of the paint. Some artists want to hide the idea of paint, so they want to represent the forms of things so defined that you forget that it was made with oils. Canyon Orange by Old Holland, that's very powerful. If I, if I need a note of high chroma, I can increase it in the darks or in the lights with this color. Putting some manganese blue before a fly lands on my palette. Oops, too late. <laughs> From my training at the academy, I was very specific all the time with the colors I was using. Now I'm becoming more vulnerable, more open to see what colors the scene asked me to use. So I have plenty of different colors and hues out here. And I just look at the place and say, what colors am I feeling? And I just grab them and put them. That's why I'm not listing it, or this is not like my palette. I'm just changing it up as I go. Valentina just asked me, don't you feel this canyon green in there? And I'm like, no, I can make it with the yellow and the blue. She's like, no, I feel it, I feel it. And I'm like, okay, I'll put it here, but let's see if we use it. I'm gonna be honest, if I need to use it, I'll grab it. If not, I won't use it. Let's see what happens. When I look down at the earth, there's a lot of overwhelming brown. So I wanna get something very close to the earth, to the soil. And if I can start from the bottom, just like in reality, will probably give me the same results that reality gives an organic piece of art. I'm starting with a shadow pattern that I see because this is the darkest thing I see over there. So I'm trying to see through the plant and just see the plant on the as a shadow laying on the ground developing around every little form on the ground that's what i'm trying to do right now so the plant will be like right here as the shadow falls on the ground and that's what i'm starting with the reason I'm starting with the shadow pattern is because it's the darkest thing on the painting and also because it describes both the plants that is cast in the shadow and the ground where the shadow is casted upon. So I get two dimensions with this shadow pattern that I'm starting with. Another advantage that I'm feeling as I'm doing the shadow pattern is that I'm getting the moment in which I'm staring at it at the beginning of it. So as the sun moves, I kept my shadows intact and I'll follow everything else with the same shadows. So that's 
also a helpful thing because if I started everything else, by the time I put the shadows, the shadow are not gonna be loyal to the plant. So now I'm gonna see if I can integrate everything together and grasp the moment. But I just realized that I'm starting with the shadows and I don't need white, but there's no white on my palette. <laughs> I forgot the white palette. And this is a, a pre-mix of white I made at home with a mixture of titanium white and lead white. That way my titanium is not as solid and also dries faster. So the shadows, I'm seeing them very cool and dark. I'll try to see if I can get that effect little by little. After a couple of hours, well, a few hours now, the sun has changed a lot. I don't want to be chasing the shadows and the light. So I'll come back tomorrow at the same hours so I can grasp more information and develop the exact sense of the time I started it. This is the next day. My painting that I got done yesterday is dried because I used liquid. Today they're saying that it's gonna rain around the time that I need to come back here. The scene is very different from this. There's no point in painting right now. I have to wait around the time that I started it. But since I might risk rain, and then I have to skip a whole day. So I'm not doing that. I'm gonna paint by my shade, by the car. So what I'm thinking is if I come here on location and pre-mix my color for the shadow on the ground, the shadow contained within the plant of corn, and then the light. So I pretty much create a set that represents the colors of my scene. That way I can go back to another location and paint it. My drawing from life is not perfect, but I will take a picture of the scene right now and I'm gonna notice the differences between the camera, the photo and the scene. The camera will increase the contrast and the color. The shapes, you can rely on the camera because in this case, nothing is distorted as much because it's far away from the subjects. I can trust the camera on, on proportion, but I already have a drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to another location where I'm comfortable, not as my studio, <laughs> but a little bit more comfortable than here because I don't have the right subject and the sun is hitting me in my face. Actually, Vale, I used a lot of the canyon green that you gave me. So I put it on my new set of colors today, but I'm changing the whole palette colors. It's another day, I'm gonna try to mix it. Remember, you can get to the same goal by different means. The specific colors don't matter as much as the principles behind the mixing of them. So if you get any primary colors and mix them together, you're gonna get is a kind of a brown so just make sure you get some red blue and yellow and white and then you can push it to different types of browns and grays to go get more more colors because i need more color and I realized I was pre-mixing here fast, it was getting cloudy and I need more paint. So I put some yellow ochre, some of the terre verte from yesterday. This is Persian blue. So I have new colors here to work from. I need to remember that if I want something a little bit lighter, it means that the sun is hitting it and it's gonna be a little bit yellower. Oh my God, this guy started walking on my Oh, poor guy, slippery slope. Come on, man, fly away. Good, oh, he took off. I don't know if I'm gonna use the dry dirt, but this is pretty close to the dry dirt part.
So my last mixture here is going to be the shadow on the ground of the soil. It's pretty cool in contrast to the yellower lights. So I did some work from the photo and from memory with the premix. I still have them here, so I kept my order pretty good. The plant has grown. It's way bigger than yesterday. So just in one day, because it rained a lot in the morning, those plants are really, really different now. And that's a beautiful thing because I'm painting something that is actually growing. I'm seeing it grow. And that's why I wanted to spend time and pay attention to this little aspect of the biggest corn crop. The dry grass here has much more contrast in front of us than what the picture can do because it's so light that it bleaches out the color. So it, it's like white in terms of, of the, how the camera works. But in nature, it's light plus high chroma. And then we can imitate a little bit with the play and combination of our colors. I am violating some of the classical principles that I used to follow because classical principles are found after the fact. It's like an accumulated knowledge that we are learning to see how the foundation of painting works. But once you start engaging with your surrounding more and more, once you're honest with your tools and with yourself, you're gonna find yourself reinventing techniques. For instance, here it's a lot of scattered values. It, it, there's not like such groupings as I used to do and look for. Here, I'm just creating the sense that I felt. I see this vastness of the corn crops and I see how I can start from small and focus in an area of what the whole is made up of. But I did like the aspect of the grass and the spikiness of it and the movement of the leaves. I wanna grasp that idea of the sun falling directly, punishing me, but helping the plants out. After going into the smallest aspect of the idea of the corn and looking at the plant from a close-up point of view, now I'm trying to represent the space, all the design of the whole field and see if I can make it work with a couple of brushes that are not going to give me so much detail as we see in nature. I'm trying to take advantage of every stop we make with our art move and, uh, and probably I'll paint the uh, corn on the cob after this. I'm getting hungry. Let's go. <laughs> Last night we did the grill and we put it and it looks so perfect. I'm like, man, I want to eat it, but I want to paint it too. I'm working on La Prima. Go for the freshness of the moment. Since I've spent two paintings doing the whole plant, close up, then I did the landscape and now I'm doing this. 
just for the corny sake of it. <laughs> Talking about a la prima, there is an instructional video on my website, Cesar Santos painting a portrait a la prima in one hour. If you want to check that out and learn my technique, my way of thinking when I paint, check that instructional video. It's full of details. All the information is there. Okay, so let's wrap this video up. I came, I saw, I painted. The plant, the land, I ate it. It was delicious.